The Star Wars universe is a dangerous place to live. It feels like entire planets are being wiped out all of the time. Within this universe, many species have gone extinct over time. And in today's video, I look at every extinct Star Wars species in canon, as of the end of the Skywalker saga. First, I've got three species which are likely extinct, but we don't know for sure yet. These are the Geonosians, the Zephonians, and the Marans. The Geonosians were wiped out by the Empire once the Death Star had been built, leaving only one survivor and a Geonosian queen egg. However, this queen named Karina was sterile and so couldn't continue the species. Now this seems pretty straightforward that the species is extinct, but in the New Republic era there were persistent rumours that some Geonosian eggs could have survived. So yeah, it's unknown whether the species is extinct or not. Looking at the Zephonians, they were an ancient species which contained many members who could wield the force. They were initially peaceful, but ended up falling to the dark side, which led towards extinction. Many fled into the great unknown, hoping to find peace. It is unknown if they were successful, and so it's very possible that they went extinct. If you want to learn more about the Zepho, we have a video on them linked in the card. On to the Marans. This species was attacked by the Separatists, with Count Dooku ordering that all Marans be eliminated. Later, a Kardeshu, a Jedi Maran who survived the attack on his planet because he wasn't there, also died, leaving every Maran we know of in canon dead. However, it's possible that the Separatists failed to get every Maran, but so far the species hasn't been shown again, so it's possible that the species is extinct. Anyway, now on to the species said to be extinct. First is the Rakatans. The Rakatans were an amphibious species from the planet Lehon, also known as Rakata or Rakata Prime. According to legend, they were the first to invent hyperspace travel. Later, they attempted to invade the galaxy, but were stopped by an uprising. They were said to have eventually gone extinct because of corruption from the dark side of the Force. I think it's very interesting to compare the Rakatans to the Zepho, as the stories of these species appear to be quite similar, and I think it's very possible that the Zepho are supposed to be a replacement of sorts in canon. Next is the Masasi. The Masasi lived on Yavin 4 thousands of years before A New Hope. 5,000 years before A New Hope, they built the stone temples on the moon, although it's unknown why. There were some theories about the Masasi, but not much is known about them in canon. One theory is that they didn't originate on Yavin 4, but were made slaves to the Sith and brought to the moon. Another theory is that they built the great temple on the moon under the leadership of Sith Lord Naga Sado, who they admired as a god. Archaeologists have suggested that the Great Temple could have been a large-scale communication device to contact other Sith Lords throughout the galaxy. Now to the Ba'an Kora. The Ba'an Kora were a species of ruminants, which means they were even toed hoofed animals that chewed the cud regurgitated from their rumens, their first stomach. Before 1300 BBY, their planet was hit by a meteor, leaving the species helpless. The Galactic Republic created the Ba'ankor Refuge on Coruscant for the surviving members of their species, making sure they could live the sorts of lives they had before. In the Imperial Era, this land was seized, and the entire species was relocated to Peral 6, a dying planet with similar characteristics to the Ba'ankor Refuge. As a result, the species went extinct within 19 years. Next is the Dizonites. The Dizonites lived in the outer rim on the moon Dizon Frey. The Empire wished to build a refueling center on the planet, but the Dizonites fought against this. The Empire then wiped out the species, recording and broadcasting the massacre as proof. Their screams were put together as a torture method, causing great emotional distress to the listener. Now to the Elayin. 
the Elayin once lived on Polis Massa and went extinct. By the end of the Clone Wars, some Kalidahin archaeologists and exobiologists believed the Elayin were their species' ancestors, and so searched Polis Massa trying to find Elayin tissue so that the species could be brought back through Kaminoan cloning technology. However, it hasn't been stated whether this was successful, and I personally believe it likely failed, bearing in mind that finding a tissue sample would likely be very difficult, and the Kaminoans were taken down by the Empire. Next is the Troaki. The Troaki were a cave-dwelling species from Rushan 9 that lived independently of all other life. They went extinct over 1,000 years before A New Hope, and their language became mostly unknown. This language was later used as a highly uncrackable code by the Rebel Alliance. Now to the Andon Host. The Andon Host came from the planet Malenko. Long before the Clone Wars, they went extinct. It was said that they were powerful necromancers, being able to raise the spirits of the dead, especially those who were wronged in life. It's ironic. He could save others from death but not himself. Finally, there's two species that are currently unnamed, although trust me, they get interesting. First, there's a species that spoke Regarium. This species, and their language, were dead by the High Republic era. However, the path of the Open Hand cult member, Shia Ganandra, intercepted a transmission using the language on a Hutt clan communications network. I think this could very well be another case of using a dead language as a code. Lastly, there's a species from the planet Geosyn. All that was left of this species was ceramic statues containing special crystals. These crystals gave the statues energy to move when sentient brain activity abruptly stopped, such as in the case of death. The statues would then move to the corpse and carry them away. In short, this species had statues which would detect when someone died and collect the body. Anyway, that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed this dive into some extinct Star Wars species, and we hope to see you later at Vault Holocron.